So, my husband has this weird work friend. She's a female, and I suspect the worst. Well, turns out everybody was telling me, don't worry, she's an innocent soul. Yeah, well, let me tell you what she decided to do on my biggest day of my life. My wedding day. Yeah, she did it. I'm female 28. I can't believe this happened, so... I'm going to do my best to recount if you guys are reading, so first, I better give some background here. Ever since I was a little girl, I always dreamed of getting married. I know it's a Disney princess cliche at this point, but it's true. I would play with dolls and have fake weddings all the time. I loved movies about weddings, and I loved attending weddings and seeing the gleam of love in the eyes of two fresh newlyweds. And most of all, I always fantasized about having the fanciest, most beautiful wedding dress. It may sound silly and sentimental to those who don't care, but it mattered to me. Ever since I saw my mom get married when I was a little girl, it just made the obsession grow. Oh, how gorgeous and majestic she looked that day. My point is, having a beautiful wedding dress on my extremely important wedding day... It meant so much to me. I'd had so many relationship struggles in the past. I was beginning to think I was never going to get married. Long story short, I met my husband and he totally proved to me that, well, true, <laughs> undenying love can and does exist. And it's finally here. We decided to get married after only nine months of dating because we both could just tell from the moment we laid eyes upon each other that we were made for each other again. In accordance with my childhood fantasies, I really wanted to splurge on a wedding. And that we did. My side of the family decides to pay for the wedding, in accordance with the tradition of the bride's family paying for the wedding. But even putting tradition aside, it would not have been fair to foist the cost of the magnificent dream wedding onto my husband's family. My husband's a simple guy. He would have been fine just going to the local courthouse and not even having a ceremony. But he and his family were supportive because they knew big weddings were a tradition on my side of the family. And they wanted to make me happy as my husband's bride. We sent hundreds and hundreds of invitations. I didn't even fully check over who all got invited because I allowed my friends and family members to invite whoever they wanted to show up. I got a little in over my head with organizing everything. As you keep reading, you'll find out why. I really should have screened the invitation list better and not allowed so many people to show up. But I was mostly just concerned with packaging of seats. This venue re-rented, it had thousands of chairs to fill, and I wanted everybody to see my big day. It sounds silly, but hey, it's true. The big day finally came, and it did not go as planned. Which is why I'm posting this story here. I guess I just need to vent because I'm absolutely livid. I've already been stressed all day long trying to do everything I possibly could, just to make sure my wedding went off without a hitch. Running around, just doing errands and making sure everything was neatly done and nicely choreographed. I wanted it all picture perfect. Things get off to a weird start when I notice one of my husband's friends, whom I've never liked or trusted to be honest, <laughs> at my wedding. Again, I should have checked the invitation list and been a little stricter about who gets in. Let me explain. I've always just had a gut feeling this woman was obsessed with my husband. Don't get me wrong, I love and trust him. I know he would never mess around with any other woman behind my back. But this woman has always given me a bad feeling. She texts my husband too much and she hangs out with him a bit too much for my comfort. She's called him in the middle of the night and he actually answers the phone and wakes me up. I had tried telling him in the past that this woman made me uncomfortable, but he always brushed it off and assured me nothing was going on between them. I tried giving her the benefit of the doubt, because it's true. She's been friends with my husband since childhood, 
They were next door neighbors growing up, and while they never dated or had a romantic past, they've always been close. They went to school together and even ended up going to the same college together. Their parents know each other, and to make it worse, my own parents are friends with this woman's parents, so they always brushed it off when I expressed concerns about her to my family while venting. Okay, imagine. Imagine my surprise when the first time I ever vented about her to my parents, my parents say this. Oh, we know her family very well, she's a good girl, and she'd never violate the sanctity of your relationship, silly. Turns out I was right. They were wrong about everything. So anyways, I'm already a little peeved over this woman I disliked being at my wedding. But I mentally just swept it under the rug so I could proceed with planned ceremonies. I was not about to let some woman who probably loves my husband ruin the big day. I'd so been looking forward to. I'd like to clarify that this woman, who we'll call Tina to make this a more convenient read was not involved in any of the ceremonies or events I've planned for the wedding. How could she have been? I never even knew she was receiving an invitation, or who could have invited her. I didn't confront anyone about it at first because I just wanted to remain calm, cool, and collect. For some reason, I thought I would look like the crazy one if I just blew up about Tina's presence, especially since everyone I know seems to like her. Yet time and time again, she kept showing up all throughout the day while I and my crew were getting everything prepped. I already had a team of helpers, so I really didn't need her. But I tried to be polite by reluctantly letting her help out. Everything she helped out with, she just made things worse. She would not figure out how to set the tables or arrange menus. She could not figure out how to put a ribbon on something. I had a feeling she was trying to sabotage the wedding on purpose, but I pushed that thought out of my mind completely. Finally, it was time to tie the knot with my husband, how they say. <laughs> By this point, my stomach was so full of butterflies, I wasn't even thinking about Tina anymore. But then the craziest thing happened. Right as the minister asked my husband and me if we were agreeing to get married, Tina emerges through the church doors. She had changed outfits and I nearly screamed in horror when I saw what she was wearing. Old Tina was wearing a beautiful wedding dress that was identical to my own. It was the same dress. There were only two of these left in the entire city, so that means she somehow knew I bought this one and decided to buy the same one, the only one left. Everybody in attendance froze. My husband, myself, the minister included. Even the church organist stopped playing. <laughs> it was an intense moment. Then Tina walked up to us with everyone watching her. And she walked up like she owned the place. She acted like it was her wedding. At this point, you could say I was speechless. I just stared her dead in the eyes as I stood there confused as to why in God's name she would want to do this on my wedding day. And then came the speech. Oh my lord, it was cringeworthy and infuriating. So, Tina stands there and rattles off this long melodramatic speech in front of everyone in attendance. She obviously had rehearsed it in the mirror or something because she played it up like she was a famous actress or something. Tina tells us all how she's been in love with my husband since they were small children and asked him if he would consider leaving me for her. Well, at this point, we were all flabbergasted. Finally, after a brief pause due to shock, my husband responded and he said, Oh, of course not, Tina. I love my wife. At this moment, Tina's eyes welled up with tears, and she starts to have a meltdown right in front of everyone on my biggest day. She starts screaming at me about how I needed to back off, how I was ruining her life. Finally, I had enough and struck back. I asked Tina what she thought would give her the right to make a spectacle like this on my wedding day. I was shaking and starting to tear up as I said all this because my nerves were strung up so high. 
I also happened to notice the flashes from cameras across the crowd. All of this was being filmed. Let me tell ya, that peeved me off pretty well. But I was so focused on Tina that I didn't even think to say anything or tell them to stop recording. I just railed on and on to Tina about how I always knew she was up to no good with my husband. And I told her how she was desperately needing professional medical help for her head. For even considering pulling a stunt like this in front of everybody. Well, I really laid into her and got everything off my chest. By this point, she was crying. I didn't care. I was happy she was crying. And that's when things got even crazier. My parents and my boyfriend's parents ran up to the altar to stop me from chewing out Tina. They actually consoled her. As if I was the one who had done something wrong here. I asked them why everyone liked this psycho lady so much. And they told me to calm down and that Tina was obviously going through something hard if she chose to act out and stunt like this in such a public manner. My husband stood there not saying a word. He still looked too dumbfounded to even formulate a response. Luckily, there was at least one sane human being in the crowd. My grandmother ran up to the altar and laid into my parents and my boyfriend's parents, which really made me feel better. My grandma and I had always been close, even when things were rocky between my mother and me. My grandma told my parents and my husband's parents that I had every right to blow up on Tina, and she agreed with me. It was highly disrespectful to the wedding and to me and my husband for Tina to even attempt this. By this point, my wedding... The big day I've been looking forward to for oh so long was ruined beyond saving. After the exchange between my grandma, my parents, and my husband's parents, it seemed like mass hysteria broke out. The five of them were in a screaming match while Tina began sobbing uncontrollably and screaming again and again, You ruined my life. I was supposed to marry him. I was supposed to marry him. She was jumping up and down like a toddler, having a tantrum. Meanwhile, the argument among my family members raged on. Then the crowd became unruly. I grabbed my husband and dragged him out of the church. We left everyone and everything behind. We knew the wedding was ruined, and we didn't even get halfway through all the events. I had planned for the ceremonies anyways, well, just because of Tina's stupid outburst. I haven't even spoken to any of my family members since this all happened earlier today. Except my grandmother, who I thanked for standing up for me when nobody else around would. And if you're still reading this, don't think there's a happily ever after right now. My husband and I have been arguing about this since it happened. I don't want to blame him, but I kind of want to blame him. I'd raised my concerns about Tina time and time again. And he'd always brush me off. He wasn't quite defending Tina's actions, but he was saying she's under a lot of stress right now. And that he understands she must have strong feelings for him to do something so over the top in public and ruin her image. I could not believe what I was hearing. My husband was making excuses for the woman who ruined our biggest day. So... No surprise that I and my husband aren't really talking right now. I love him, and I still want to marry him after all. I didn't even get a chance to say I do. So, that'll have to be fixed. But I'm so upset that he doesn't seem to get why I'm so livid over what happened. It's like he doesn't even emphasize with all the time and effort and money myself and my family have invested into this thing. And a day... That was supposed to be the best day of my and my husband's life. To top it all off, my husband just admitted to me that he was the one who invited Tina to the wedding without even consulting me. So, in a sense, it really is his fault this all happened. I'm not totally sure why I'm posting this other than the fact that I desperately just need to vent. I'm also asking for advice. Should I try to have another wedding and just request that Tina not come anywhere near the venue? How can I work things out with my husband? I love him, 
and we just want to make sure things work, but I have a feeling I'll always resent him for this small role in the situation. And that might make me sound bad, but it's the truth. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. I hope you're having a great day. Today's story is a mess. There's multiple updates to hop into and things are about to escalate, to say the least. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I animate stories every single day, so if you're into this kind of thing, make sure you stick around, smash that subscribe button, guys, and let's hop into update number one. Hey, I'm back for an update. Thanks to everyone who commented. I appreciate all the kindness, support, and compassion I've been receiving. Unfortunately, things just keep getting harder and weirder. In case anyone's wondering, I still haven't had a chance to reschedule the wedding that went oh so wrong. There's too much attention on me right now, so much heat. And even more attention on Tina. That's right, the video of Tina's outburst at my wedding went viral in my town. I live in a small town in Georgia, where most people know each other and everybody loves to gossip down here in the south. It didn't take long for a word of my wedding disaster and the subsequent video footage to spread like wildfire, covering every crevice of my backwoods small country town. I'm just glad the video hasn't made its way to late night or primetime TV yet because it's rough. Between all the videos the wedding attendees uploaded to YouTube, you can see everything. Tina walking in wearing an identical dress, the speech Tina gave, the argument between my family, Tina's uncontrollable sobbing as my rebuttal to Tina's advances as well. Not that I'm getting any pleasure out of this, mind you. Now, the entire town knows my wedding was ruined. Yes, it's embarrassing for Tina as it should be, but it's embarrassing for me as well. My husband's been carrying on with his life as if nothing happened. So that's still bugging me, and I'm upset that people who were invited to my wedding felt like it was okay to film everything and just spread my embarrassment moments around. Today, I get a message on Facebook from Tina, who told me I'm going to pay for humiliating her at the wedding. The nerve of this woman is absolutely appalling. I can't believe she had the gall to message me on my personal social media profile right after the stunt she just pulled that's causing me so much turbulence. And she's actually blaming me? I told her she was the one who humiliated herself and not so kindly reminded her that she was crashing my wedding. I blocked her so I won't have to read whatever dumb response she would have to muster up. Tina needs to learn a lesson and accountability. Update number two. Well, you're all not going to believe what's happening to me since the last update. I'm back and I wish I could say things have gotten better. Sadly, this madness just refuses to end. First off, I've hardly been seeing my husband lately. He's been working a ton of hours to help my family and I pay off all the debt racked up from the wedding. Suffice to say, I've also been working quite a bit for the same reasons. I drive for a living, so I naturally, well, this has led to an increase in the amount of time I spend on the road. The reasons I share this? Well, I've been getting followed and harassed by Tina. The first time it happened, I just swept it under the rug as a mere coincidence. I did think it was weird that Tina was now a police officer. When the entire time I've known her, I've never heard anything about her either being or wanting to become a police officer. But I must admit, I was speeding. I figured Tina was just doing her job when she pulled me over. We recognized each other, but the interaction was brief. She did write me a ticket, and a ticket is the last thing I need right now on top of all the other stuff I'm having to pay for. But... I sucked it up and moved on. I told my husband about it when we got a brief chance to talk one night, when neither of us were even working. Much like everything else that's been completely happening lately, he brushed it off as a coincidence. He swore that he had no idea Tina had become a police officer in town, and promised me that he had not even been talking to her since the wedding fiasco. 
I eventually relented and tried to put the incident out of my head. Then it just kept escalating and I would be making deliveries for my job and notice a police car. Always just, well, basically waiting for me. One day, I was driving around and noticed a cop tailgating me. Sure enough, Tina. I looked her right in the eyes. Naturally, I got nervous about a cop tailing me. Even if it hadn't been Tina, I still would have been nervous. But it was even worse knowing it was her. She pulled me over again as soon as I made the slightest mistake. These traffic tickets just kept piling up. Every week or two, I got another ticket from Tina. I tried fighting the tickets in court and the judge always ruled in her favor because every time I got a ticket, well, I was technically breaking the law. I tried explaining that anybody, and I mean anybody, would be getting ticketed this much if they were getting tailgated and followed around by a police officer constantly. I even hired a lawyer and filed harassment complaints against Tina, but the police department and the judges just ignored it. Even my husband was just telling me, I better start driving more carefully. So guys, am I crazy? Can anyone give me some support or advice here? Update post number three. Hey, I'm back for another one. I want to vent some more. I feel like such a fool. And it pains me to type this. I've got a huge knot in my stomach and a sense of impending doom all over my body. Basically, I got evidence my husband's cheating. If you've been following my updates thus far, I probably don't have to tell you who you think that my husband's cheating with, huh? It all makes sense now. The late hours, the distant attitude, the constant dismissal of my problems with Tina harassing, and now I found it all out. The other day, I noticed my husband had left his Instagram account logged on to the living room computer. I would never dare disrespect privacy, but I happened to get on Instagram and just saw the notification at the top of the screen, and it, it said, <laughs> Hey sexy, is the wicked wedding witch home? To me, this was a dead giveaway that Tina was messing my husband up by messaging him, and I wanted to ignore it and log out of my husband's account and not see it and just log into mine. I even hoped it would just be a bot account spamming my husband. But oh boy, I clicked the conversation and I read everything. The profile didn't have a real name or real photos. Tina was obviously concealing her identity, and my husband obviously knew who he was talking to. There was no mistaking that. She knew so many details about me. The wedding. Everything. This profile knew things about me that only my husband and my parents knew. It was shocking and creepy, but my husband supported it all. Seeing the things they both typed back and forth absolutely broke me. Guys, I probably shouldn't even admit this, but I don't care anymore. I've started following Tina around on her police shift. Luckily, she stopped pulling me over, but I can't figure out why. I know she knows I'm back there. I want her to feel the same fear and anguish she's been putting in me for months now. My theory is this. Tina has eased off and on the harassment because, judging by the Instagram messages I read, the affair between her and my husband's getting deep. The way that they talk to each other in messages makes it sound like, hey, they're in love. I haven't confronted my husband about this yet, and I don't really know how to. Right now, all I want to do is chase Tina to the ends of the earth and make sure she never messes with me again. I keep hoping to find some evidence of her affair with my husband when I follow her. I'm going to keep following her during work and outside of work until I get the evidence I desperately need. Update number four. I'm back for yet another update. This is getting too hard for me to process. I'm going to do my best here to collect my thoughts and calmly type them out, but I can't even think right now. So... If you read my previous update, you'll know I've been following Tina around the city on her shift in hopes of finding evidence of her meeting up with my hubby. 
The other day, I thought I'd finally caught her in the act. I was trailing her police car just a few vehicles back from her, and I didn't want to be noticed this time. I thought if she didn't know I was back there, she might be more likely to visit my husband, and then I could confront them both. I'd been following her for a while, and I started to recognize the route she was taking, well, the way she was taking me down the road. <laughs> my heart started pounding. It was finally happening. We were on the way to my husband's work. My husband's been working at the 24-hour Burger King after a couple miles from my parents' house. I was sure that Tina was going to park her police cruiser at Burger King and walk inside to meet with my husband, but hey, she parked at the McDonald's next door. She gets out of the vehicle with binoculars and begins scooping out the Burger King. I couldn't take this game anymore, so I parked my car right next to Tina and decide to confront her. I asked her why she was spying on my husband if she was already messing around with him and sending him love notes on his Instagram. Tina said she didn't know what I was talking about. So I bust out the screenshots I forwarded to myself from the computer. I showed her everything and I demanded an explanation for what's happening. Tina paused and told me she had something she needs to tell me. I was ready for an admission of guilt, but what she uttered out of her mouth was even worse than I could have ever expected. She told me she's been secretly surveying my husband and that, well, she had proof that my husband was having an affair with my mother. At this point, my jaw nearly hit the concrete parking lot floor. And, yeah, it was bad. I was stunned and in a state of total disbelief. I demanded proof, because how could I know this wasn't just some crazy stunt or diversion Tina cooked up? But the proof hurt worse than anything. Tina pulled out her cell phone and showed me pictures of my husband and my mother at different public places. And in some photos, they were kissing and doing other inappropriate things. I nearly fainted from the shock of all this, and before I could even respond, I just got into my car and drove off as fast as I could. I had to go home and think about all this. It all made sense now. Tina was no longer harassing me because her new target was my mother. She knew my husband had fallen out of love with me and was now seriously involved with my mom. It also explained why the Instagram profile knew so much about me, and the messages exchanged with my husband told it all. Guys, I simply don't know what I'm going to do about this. I'll update you again. I'm back. One final update, update 5. I know it's been a while, and I know I left everybody hanging, but I figured I owed it to everyone to explain how things wrapped up, and my life. The day I confronted Tina and she exposed my husband's affair with my mother to me, I went home and simply sat on the couch, stunned, speechless. Finally, I get a cell phone call from the police department. I answered. It was Tina. She apologized for all the pain and trouble she caused in my life, and she asked me for my forgiveness. She said she realized my husband isn't who she thought he was, and I had to agree that my husband was not the man I thought he was either. She offered to pay me back for all the unfair tickets that she's given me, as well as the money that I've spent on lawyers to defend myself. I told her it was a nice gesture, but my main concern was figuring out how to break things off with my husband and confront my mother once and for all. Tina came up with an idea to confront my husband and my mom under the guise of a traffic stop. She told me she had figured out exactly what their plan was for the next day after doing a little bit of her eavesdropping. The next day, Tina picked me up from her home after my husband went to work. Sure enough, he went to meet my mom. That's when we busted him. I get out of the car and started screaming at him. Every problem I've ever had with my mother and my husband was aired out right there and then. I told her she was a sorry excuse for a mother because she stood by, allowed my wedding to be ruined, and knew the whole time she was actually sleeping with the groom. 
I told my mom and husband that trust could never be regained between us, and Tina informed them that we would be using the body cam footage as evidence during my and my husband's divorce trial. I'm not sure how I'm going to pick up the pieces after all this stress and drama, but hey, I'll find a way. I survived this far, I'll keep surviving. Here I am months after all this began, here to tell you all that my divorce was finalized. The judge said it was the quickest divorce proceedings he'd ever come across because, well, I had concrete evidence of infidelity. My husband couldn't even try to fight it, and he didn't even get a single penny. My mother and father are still in the process of getting their divorce, and I haven't been talking to either of them. I've been trying to rebuild my new life. I've spent so much time living for others, not enough time figuring out who I want to be. I thank everyone who gave me good advice and kind words of encouragement throughout all this in the comment section. Thank you for reading. So, this story had one of the craziest twists I've ever read. I 100% expected it to be the work colleague who was doing all the cheating with the husband. But it turns out, oh no, it's way worse than that. It's OP's mother. Guys, if you were in this position and you were there thinking, oh my goodness, this can't be true, but it's true. What do you do? Let me know in the comment section down below. Maybe, well, I don't want to say this, but maybe someone in the comment section has been through something like this. Well, let's talk about it. Guys, have a fantastic day. Smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, peace.